And today is a special evening here in, the, in this Polish Slavic Center when we will have two parts. First, we have a lecture, and then we'll have a concert. So I want to say a few words about um, the idea of the concert. So we have a wonderful professor, Małgorzata Woźna-Stankiewicz from the University, Jagiellonian University, who will present for us, yes, Professor Małgorzata Woźna-Stankiewicz on the right, lecture about the 50 years, even more. She will present for us a special lecture about the last even more years of the Polish music. And you can see a title, a window onto the world if, about the Polish festival in last let's more than half century. So professor is a distinguished writer, musicologist from Krakow, writing also about Polish music, about also the French music. And today we'll have like kind of introduction to the Polish music as a kind of summary. I hope you will enjoy it and I would like to invite to the stage professor Małgorzata Woźna Stankiewicz from Krakow. Very much. Dobry wieczór Państwu. Jest mi bardzo miło. Jestem szczęśliwa, że w tym roku jubileuszowym jestem z Państwem. Dziękuję za zaproszenie. Good evening, Mr. President of the Polish and Slavic Center. Mr. Director of the festival, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me to deliver this lecture. It has great honor and pleasure to be here. The title of my presentation is A Window onto the World. Contemporary music festivals from 1956 in Poland. Now I owe you some translation. Contemporary music festivals in Poland after the Second World War contributed to the slow but sure process of the dismelting of the Iron Curtain. A window of opportunity opened. And as a result, we could get to know music from around the world. A similar opening is possible here in New York, Paderewski, Menuet. A similar opening has been possible here in New York thanks to the programs of the International Chopin and Friends Festivals, which over the years have been allowing its audiences to get in touch with Polish music and its deeply rooted tradition. 
the output of Polish composers, Frédéric Chopin, has been the ultimate symbol and strong source of inspiration to many uh, generations of Polish artists. May I rem remind you that it is in New York that from the end of the Second World War, a Polish composer, Tadeusz Siegfried Kasser, worked for the Consulate General of the Republic of Poland. He organized aid for musicians in Poland and popularized Polish music in the United States. In December 1948, for political reasons, Tadeusz Kasser broke off his cooperation with the Polish government and settled in New York as an emigrant. Kasser's merit was also the establishment of the Chopin Fund in New York, originally an initiative of Arthur Rubinstein, Walter Darmosch, and Joseph Dims Taylor. The goal of the Chopin Fund was to promote Chopin's works and Polish music. Now, let me return to Poland after the Second World War. The country found itself within the sphere of Soviet influence. The new government in Poland introduced censorship as well as control of the press, publications, and performances which greatly hindered cultural development. Art in literature and fine arts, also in music, the trend imposed by the authorities was socialist realism, socialism in Polish. Starting from 1949, the music genre of choice for propagators of socialist realism was a sing-along type of populist song, which was to be simple and preferably based on Polish folk themes or written in the style of Polish patriotic of military songs. The years of socialist realism brought not only constraints on creative expression, composers were also expected to participate in the government's required cultural policy. Such situation of artists in Poland meant that many of them emigrated. For example, Roman Palester, in 1950, and Andrzej Panufnik in 1954. Their decision led to repressions against them in Poland. Their works were banned from concert hall. Their names were removed from publications and publishers' catalogs. The communist authorities chose to decide which contemporary Polish or world composition would be promoted in concert halls across Poland. We could point out some landmark developments within the framework of the socio-political and economic systems in Poland in the wake of the communist take over of power. Censorship was introduced and international policy 
was dictated by the Cold War. Here are the most important aspects. Please look at the charts. On the caps of August and September 1945, Krakow hosted the first National Composers' Convention, the first after the war. Its final event was the Festival of Contemporary Polish Music, which saw the performance of a number of works composed during the war. In Krakow, Andrzej Panufnik's Peasant Songs and Artur Malawski's Symphony No. 1 were premiered. The works of other composers, such as Lutosławski, Kasern, Padlewski, Ecker, were also presented. The first International Contemporary Music Festival in Warsaw was initiated in the year 1956, the year of a political breakthrough in Poland. As pointed out by Iwona Lindstedt, the initiative of the Warsaw Autumn Festival came from two young composers, Serotsky and Bert. But many more people were instrumental in its implementation. For example, Bacewicz, Dobrowolski, Kotoński, and Jarociński. The Warsaw Autumn is the only contemporary music festival in Poland on an international scale and with an international status. For many years, it was the only event of this kind in Central and Eastern Europe. Nonetheless, it remains a living organism. It thrives as much as Polish cultural funding and the general condition of music allows it. The festival is organized by the Polish Composers' Union. The festival was an obvious crack on the Iron Curtain, an island of creative freedom in a sea of Compolersi socialist realism. Tadeusz Wielecki, here in Warsaw, the most varied forms of artistic innovation were possible, that created a sense of general freedom of expression, and the festival was seen as a form of political protest. Szymanowski's Stabat Mater was presented during the first festival, which is a masterpiece of this father of Polish modern music. The works created after the Second World War were listened to. For example, Sikorskich Symfonietta and Michielski Symphony No. 1, Polish, along with many works of other Polish composers. <laughs> Serotsky's artistic temperament was quite different from that of Michelski. <laughs> Mitch 
Bielski. In time, however, it was important to introduce changes to festival programs so that Polish audiences would be exposed not solely to well-established modern classics, but also to avant-garde works from across the world. The symbol, the symbol of avant-garde were the works and ideas propagated by John Cage. The ideas of indeterminacy, Cage works were often played at the Warsaw Autumn Festivals. Poles have always been interested innovative modernist and postmodern techniques of American composers. See the chart which contains a list of names of American composers whose works were presented at festivals. It was important to present various styles of modern European music from Germany, France, Italy, and other countries. Polish audiences very much appreciated the originality of Messian's musical style. So, recognizable new melody, rhythm, harmony, timbral language, and his fascination with built song. Let's listen to a fragment of Messian's exotic birds for piano and small orchestra, recording from the Warsaw Autumn Festival. It is a well-known fact that many Polish composers began their brilliant careers at the Warsaw Autumn Festival. The years of their debuts at this festival are on the charts. Later, modern music festivals were venued in other Polish cities. These festivals had a different program profile. For example, Polish modern music, modern music from Poland and the world, 
modern music from a selected cultural center, modern music of a particular composer, featuring premiums only, or electronic music. Those festivals were organ organized in Poznań, Wrocław, Kraków, Warszawa, Katowice, Kraków and Lublin. I am from Krakow, so I will talk about the festival which takes place in this former capital of Poland. The 34th festival took place this year. The festival's name has changed. Please look at the chart. No. Yes. The initiators of the festival were Kaszycki, Megrej, Łuciuk. The subsequent directors of the festival are Jerzy Stankiewicz and Marcel Chyżyński. During the first five editions of the festival, Primarily, the works of Krakow composers were presented, and occasionally works of artists from outside Krakow. A new era in the history of the Krakow Festival begins in 1994. The works of Krakow composers are the center but new music from Ukraine, Belarus, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic is also present. At that time, new music from Ukraine and Belarus was almost unknown in Poland. Significant works from new Western European music were also introduced. There are six types of festival events. A monographic concert, a meeting with, with composer, a composer, a lecture, an exhibition, a documentary, composer's portrait, a tour, experiencing the genius loci of the composer's home. Later, the festival's program was expanded to include new music from South Korea, China, and Japan. The new event is the Krzysztof Penderecki International Competition for Young Composers. Let me present some examples of monographic concerts. Krakow Composers School, composers from the Czech Republic, Con Chopin, Italian-Polish Composers Project, Krystyna Moszumańska Nazar Memory Concert.
festival debuts of young composers from Krakow have an important promotional function. Look at the chart with, which contains a list of names of young composers from Krakow and the years of their debut at the festival. The festival is also a forum for debuts of young Polish composers from outside Krakow and composers from outside Poland who studied in Krakow. The works of such grandmasters as Paderewski, Szymanowski, Lutosławski, Penderecki, Gurecki, Stravinsky, and Messiaen were also performed. Modern Ukrainian music has been present at the Krakow Festival for 28 years, long before the eyes of the whole world have turned towards this country and the ongoing war with Russia. Here are the names of some Ukrainian composers and the years of their first performances during the Krakow Festival. Finally, three examples of tours from the series Genius Loci, visit to the homes of Polish composers. Władysław Żeleński in Grotkowice, near Krakow, Karol Szymanowski in Zakopane, Villa Atma, and Ignacy Jan Paderewski in Kąśna Dolna, near Tarnów. I believe that the aforementioned music festivals in Poland have been a window onto the world for various types of modern music from outside Poland. In successive editions of those festivals, a pliet of Polish artists not only showed enormous ingenuity in the area of, of, of artistic com concepts, but also clearly distinct compositional idioms. Also nowadays, culture and music play an influential and instructive role in the public domain. Music possesses a virtue in its own right as an independent form of art. And that's what we should embrace in the first place. By way of recapitulation, let me say that the music has played a very important role not only for Polish musicians, but for the whole country during the years of communist regime and throughout the period of transformation. Thank you for your attention.
So, thank you very much for this presentation. That a little introduce the music world of the last 50 years in Poland with the festival. Thank you very much, for Professor, for coming here for this wonderful presentation. And I want to say that we'll have a little break now after this lecture, in, and after a while we're going to hear a piano recital um, with Paderewski and Chopin works by Jakub Kuschlik. So have a little bit break. Thank you very much for your attention.